got uh, Coach Pike will come into the podium now. Coach, congratulations on the win over number 13, Illinois. If you want to just start us off with some thoughts on the win, and then we can take some questions. Yeah, well, first, appreciate, appreciate all you being on here. Um, I thought a great college basketball game. Um, it's too bad the rack wasn't full of our fans. It would have been an unbelievable environment. Um, Illinois is really, really good. Um, coach Underwood's done a great job building that program. Tremendous respect for him as a coach and the players and their program. So anytime you could get a win, you know, against a team like that, it's, it's, a, it's a good day. Uh, but uh, I thought our guys played hard. I thought they played the whole game. It was definitely a 40-minute game. Uh, put 91 points on the board for us is a good sign for us moving forward. Uh, but we, we turn our attention quickly to a really good Ohio State team that we have to jump on a plane and go go play. So I'm going to enjoy this for a few minutes and uh, be on to the next one. Thanks, Coach. We can start off with questions from Jerry. Steve, what uh, when you fell down by 11, what was the single biggest thing that turned the game around in your mind? I mean, I think, uh, you know, we just settled in. You know, like, it's not really a big deal. I don't ever get to... You know, we could score this year. We can defend. You know, it's a couple possessions, you know. And I thought we were getting some good looks. I, I like the fact that we didn't turn the ball over tonight. I thought that was huge for us. And we were doing a good job on the glass. So those were the two things in every timeout I was most concerned with. I wasn't concerned with, you know, being up or down at any point in time. I knew how this team would play. I knew Illinois would give us 40 minutes of, of a war. And... Uh, you know, we just had to be at the end of the, you know, one point better, and, and, and we were fortunate to be that. We can go to Bobby Dowen and then Brian Fonseca. Steve, uh, how is Cliff doing, and what can you tell us about his injury? Um, you know, I don't know a lot. He's in the training room right now, so it's his knee, and um, we'll get it checked out tomorrow, and hoping like heck um, that he's good. Steve, uh, Miles Johnson playing in, in – how do you think Miles played defending Colbert and other injury news? How is Mawat Mag doing? I saw he didn't play. He had a run his foot. Yeah, I mean, Mawat sprained his ankle practice. He's, he'll, he'll, he'll be fine, but he'll, he has to go through the rehab too. Um, you know, Colburn is really good, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's a tough guy to guard. Uh, he and Cliff did a really good job all night. He's really f the most physical player maybe in the country. Um, he's huge, and he's talented. So, uh, you know, Miles sleep well tonight, and uh, I thought all of our guys did a good job. I thought we did a good job of converging to coming down and helping. Um, you know, they have really good players. I thought we did a good job on Io too. I mean, and, and his numbers are unbelievable, but I did think we made his life, you know, difficult. And uh, – I was most worried about Trent Frazier, too, because everyone talks about um, their big two. But Trent Frazier's, you know, 1,200 points career guy going into his senior year. So he's been a really good player, too. And obviously he played really well. So they got good players. You worry about them all. Um, most excited that we were able to out-rebound them. And uh, we took care of the basketball. And I thought those were two huge, you know, keys. But uh, Miles, was, Miles was really good and, and uh, continues to be really good. And we need him to be. We can go to Richie and then Chris Nowalski. Hey, Coach. Can you talk a little bit more about Jacob Young's game? I know he kind of uh, pretty much carried the offense in the first half, it seemed like. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, he's in the gym all the time. I mean, he took on the task. He wanted to guard, you know, Io, And he had to guard Rebello, too. He was a good Trent Frazier. He had to guard a lot of people. Um I love I love his energy. Obviously, love his defense. But he, he tip of the hat. He's gotten better. He watches a lot of film. He he's practicing well. Um, and you know, he's probably one of the fastest guards in the country. So uh, um, you know, and and I think you saw with Geo today back. You know, uh, with another week under his belt and stuff. Those those guys with Montez and Paul and you know those guys. They're all different and they're all very valuable. Hey, Coach, uh, I know the other day you talked about Illinois and, and the way they rebound the ball. Uh, you guys out-rebounded them today. Uh, what did you guys see from your team in that area? 
Well, I mean, it was huge. They're plus 17 on the glass. So they're one of the leading rebound teams in the country. So we harped on it. The guys, my staff did a good job of preparing the guys. And, um, you know, we went head to head with them on the backboards. We pride ourselves in being a good, you know, good rebounding team too. I was excited. We got 15 offensive rebounds, a good number, you know, against them. Um, but, uh, you know, I think our guys understood the scouting report and they, they tried to do the things that we asked them to do and, and come away with a nice win against a really, really good team. Go over to Aaron Brightman. Uh Coach, you always talk about uh, the little things that Paul Mulcahy does to help you win. So talk about, uh, you know, his extended minutes in the second half today. And, you know, it seemed like after he drew that flagrant foul, it kind of was a little bit of a momentum builder for you guys and just what he was able to do for you. Yeah, I mean, but Paul does. He does a lot of winning things, uh, as you see. And then down the stretch, making all his free throws, too. We, we shot the ball really well from the foul line to kind of wrap up the game. But, you know, he rebounds. He gets assists. He draws some tough defensive assignments. He's a really good rotation guy. He he uh, directs out there. He gives us some direction, too, at times. And I can kind of move him around. So Paul has, you know, done a really, really good job of helping us in, in a lot of areas. Sometimes those areas don't show up, you know, in the box score. But um, he's tough, and 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 he he does winning winning things, and you saw that today. Take another question from Jerry. Steve, this is now two home games where your team has played really well with with no one in the stands. And now you've mentioned how great it would be to have people there. But what do you think of the way they've responded and self started in these situations? Well, you know, I, I like our bench a lot. Keeps them very involved. I'll give you know Caleb McConnell a tip of the hat, and, and and Luke Nathan. Those guys, great energy, and they you know Nick Brooks. They they do a really good job. Daniel and Aiden. Um, they do a good job. First of all, simulating the other team in practice, but then they bring great energy, you know, to us. And we got to bring it ourselves. You know, I'm thankful we got a more of a veteran team than we've had in the past because um, they're motivated. Um, you know, to play basketball. Um, but those guys give us great energy and, and, and we, we need that. And uh, today was no different. Um, I thought our bench was really good. We got a Bobby and then Matt Manley. Steve, can you talk about Gio's presence? I know he didn't have a huge scoring night, but just having him out there, how much does that help you guys in a game like this? Yeah, well, first of all, it's, uh, you know, to, to get Gio back and have a week of practice. Again, he missed 18 days of practice. So to get him back in rhythm and for a game like this, so important. But you saw, you know, he had five assists. He leads us in assists. He has one turnover. He has two steals. You know, he does a lot of things. He makes free throws, too, at the end. Um you know, his his veteran presence is, is missed, and we can move him around, too, you know, with Jacob and Paul and, and, and the guards that we have. So his versatility helps us in a lot of ways. Uh, but his maturity, he's been in big games. You know, he wants the ball at the end, you know, and, and you can't put a price tag on on those qualities and, and, and the amount of minutes that um, he has played here. Pat Manley, show of sports. Yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, just two quick questions about the defense. Uh, you mentioned having to kind of use a lot of different guys in a team effort to guard IO. Maybe you could just kind of walk through some of the guys who you thought stood out. And then the other one was just they shot five for nine from three in the first half, and they didn't even take one until like the five minute mark. Did you guys talk about, you know, running at the shooters a little bit more and taking that away? I mean, one, of, one of the important you know, task in this game, they get to the free throw line a lot. So you can't defend the foul line. So I thought we did a great job, especially in the second half of not fouling, um, putting them to the line, stopping the action. Um, so I thought that was a huge key, but you know, everyone got IO. I mean, uh, Jacob Young started with them. Uh, he wanted the assignment and then uh, Montez always gets them. So Montez quickly uh, into that role. And then Gio and Ron, too, sat down and had to guard him sometimes on, on some switch-offs and what have you. So, I mean, you got to guard him with your team. I mean, he's obviously a really talented player and um, can really score in a lot of different ways. Um, so you have to do, you know, a great job with team defense. But, you know, I think, you know, Jacob Young and Montez are really good defenders. And, um, and Ron, too, and... You know, Gio's got that craftiness of a veteran, too, on the defensive end. And obviously, see what, you know, Miles can do. Um, some, some guys that when they put their minds to it, they can really, they can really defend. And you needed, you needed that tonight. And, uh, 
you know, Illinois averages 88. We didn't hold them under their average, but we kept them at their average. And, uh, you know, after getting off to a tough start, um, you know, we did a good job, especially in the second half. I got time for two more for Coach. We'll go to Matt Sugam and then Brian Fonseca. Yeah, Steve, when you come in with the expectations like you guys had with a top 25 ranking, how important was it to start the season off like you guys have 6-0, 2-0 in the Big Ten? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, we don't spend a lot of time, quite honestly, on, on that stuff. Um, I think our guys know how good Illinois is. I think they know we got four more ranked teams in the next five games or so. So, I mean, in our league, you're always playing, you know, ranked teams. That's the league that we're in. And we don't spend a lot of time talking about those expectations. Just we talk about what we need to do to win that next game. And, you know, and I tell our guys all the time, don't read the clippings, you know, just just stay focused on, you know, the next game and um, understand what we have to what we have to do. And, and they've been really mature like that. So we got to keep that up. Steve, I know you take it one game at a time and. You don't really like reading clippings, but this, you guys just beat the Big Ten favorites at home. You showed a lot of people nationally, you know how good you guys are. Was there any extra celebration in the locker room? Was there anything different about it? Was there any added? No, anything? I mean we try to enjoy our wins. You know, we always try to enjoy a win. I don't care who we play. You know, it's hard to win a college basketball game. Thankful the game went off. You know, with all the cancellations, and thankful that Illinois got here. You know, safely and did our you know, the protocol and. Um, you know, so after the game, you always try to enjoy wins. They're hard to get. They're really hard to get in the Big Ten. Um, but we have a couple of days now to flip the switch and, and, and go to Ohio State. So uh, our guys will enjoy, like I said, and I want them to enjoy. They earned it, and they, they earned a good rest, too. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. I know you guys don't like to hear that, but <laughs> that's how I kind of am. Thanks, Coach. We're going to let Coach go on that. We'll bring in some student athletes.